So the people over at Bioware have been telling us how excited they are about Dragon Age Veilguard's new character creator. And uh, let's just say some of their both artistic and cultural choices have gone under some scrutiny. In an age where, after the massive success of Baldur's Gate 3, non-binary character creation has become the norm, and let's be honest, this probably reflects what DMs have done in the tabletop RPG scene for non-binary and trans players, probably for the past 10 to 15 years. But like that white person who goes to Africa and feels they really haven't gotten the full experience until they let the flies land on the child so they can feed them, Bioware just had to one-up them. This is the most surface level, basic, completely devoid of any creativity, a way to virtue signal that you care about trans people. But the topic of this video isn't so much Dragon Age Veilguard in particular, although I will be talking about Dragon Age Veilguard as an example. What really interests me for this video is a tactic I think we're seeing more and more, particularly with AAA gaming titles. Now, I've made videos on this channel about Dragon Age Veilguard before being critical of how I thought the game looked and that I thought it was going to be another mediocre, watered-down RPG in a world of AAA developers that are convinced no one wants complex RPGs that replicate tabletop systems in spite of the fact that Baldur's Gate 3 was the best-selling Steam game of the previous year. Now, I'll talk about the reasons for that maybe a little bit at the end of this video. But what I want to talk about right now is a practice I think we're seeing more and more in the gaming world. And it is people trying to save their careers within the gaming industry by intentionally rage baiting gamers to create negative hype from people on the Internet in order that should the game happen to flop, they can say, well, I mean, it wasn't our fault. Obviously, the most notable example of this would be some tweets made by the Concord devs after the absolute abysmal speed running record success of Concord in failing. And it looks like Veilguard is probably going to follow suit. Just for a bit of reference, in the videos that I've made on the past for this channel on the topic of Veilguard, one of the things you get to see is you get to see the analytics of the people who are interested in videos on that topic. Those videos were generally 40 plus and over, entirely male, uh, not a single person that Google could identify as female clicked on those videos at all. I think between them, they're at 7,000 views, so out of the 7,000 people interested, no women. Now, in marketing, I'm pretty sure that's called a reasonably stilted demographic. A demographic they must know is not going to respond well when they come out and say that they're creating the game's character creator to resemble The Sims, a game that could not possibly be less represented by the target demographic of the Dragon Age series. They are 100% aware that taking the we're doing the Sims thing is not at all appealing to their own demographic and they're conscious of that. They're also conscious of the fact that everyone who's ever posted something on the internet is that the minute you take a very strong political stance on a controversial issue, you're going to get all kinds of people coming out of the works, calling you all kinds of horrible things. That's just how the internet works. As I said before, there were totally non-controversial ways of doing their character creator. They could have done what Baldur's Gate 3 did, and no one would have batted an eyelash. But no, you strangely had to work cosmetic surgery into a world where people can change their appearance using magic. One can only hope they've discovered silicon so they can start coating the shields in it to protect you from dragon flame. This all comes, of course, during a massive media blitz by client media for the game, as well as larger YouTubers. And if you know anything about the history of Bioware lately, you know they need this game to be a win. But perhaps more importantly, the people involved in making the game are going to need an excuse if the game fails. Because in my belief, because if this game does not sell well, I'm pretty certain it will be the end of Bioware as we know it. And subsequently mean unemployment for everyone involved in its creation. And the game is already working on building up its list of excuses should this occur. Should Dragon Age Veilguard drown in its 2024 AAA mediocrity, which it probably will looking at the overall arc of Bioware over the past few years and the franchise as a whole, 
all of the political controversy stirred up and of course all the mean comments left will allow the people behind the game, often in non-programming or non-directly creative areas but more in production and marketing to say, oh well it wasn't our fault, it was an audience of bigoted old men and there's not really anything we could do about it, we were just trying to do the right thing and what do you know, it didn't work out. Well, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not taking the rage bait on this one. Dragon Age Veilguard, in my opinion, will turn out to be yet another AAA piece of sludge made by people that are too afraid or just unable through lack of talent to make complex and in-depth RPGs. One of the things we've seen almost over the entirety of the RPG world, including places like Wizards of the Coast, is a slow degradation of storytelling game complexity, and a host of other issues that made RPGs fun both on the tabletop and in computer game form. Roleplay gaming has become more about representing yourself and your own narcissistic ego in a game rather than the fun of acting, drama, and becoming a character, and this winds up with more general modern societal trends. And we've seen this with fantasy outside of the RPG space as a whole. Go back to the 1970s and you have a conservative Christian Catholic like J.R.R. Tolkien writing fantasy and a an socialist anarchist like Michael Moorcock writing fantasy. The two couldn't disagree more politically, but their fantasy still reads reasonably similar. Nowadays it feels like if you play an RPG with somebody or some game, you'll know their politics within probably the first 30 seconds of playing. And despite my gripes with the game's story, this is without a doubt the reason that Baldur's Gate 3 was such a success. It's also no doubt why so many people are enjoying Japanese RPGs, anime, and manga, which have been exempt a little bit from this social decline. But I'll save this rant for another video deep dive when I'll go into the whole history of this stuff whenever I get around to it. Instead, let's do a little bit of roleplay. I'm going to bring out my crystal ball. And in my crystal ball, I see Dragon Age Veilguard being released. I see it getting the 7 out of 10 from IGN or perhaps an 8 out of 10. I see the Steam reviews of mostly positive to very positive because a lot of people are just happy to eat up this swill with a few people complaining about the game's character design, but mostly people complaining about that darn EA launcher that just won't integrate well with the Steam client. The reality is it's tired, it's boring. We've seen it before. They've watered down the game to try and meet a mass modern audience from taking the Kunari models and making them look like something drawn on DeviantArt to slowly degrading what was a reasonably interesting and complex combat system in Dragon Age Origins to what appears to be standard PlayStation button bashing swill. Dragon Age Veilguard is likely not to be the bang that causes a lot of controversy despite their attempts, but just the whimper that will probably end a dying franchise that represents a slow decline of Bioware's creative talent as they've left the company to do other things. Normally when I'm critical of a game on this channel, I'm kind of secretly also hoping that it surprises me as much better than I thought, and I can say I was wrong. But in the case of Dragon Age Veilguard, I kind of hope the game is a massive flop, that it probably ends Bioware just being around after their recent failures, so we can stop seeing them drag the name through the mud. The very fact that the people at Bioware are happy to work with the people over at Maxis, the designers of The Sims, probably one of the most EA swill based DLC companies in gaming, really shows you just how far the company's fallen. If you watch this far into the video, do give me a like and subscribe. As I always say, I'm a small channel and it really gives me a dopamine hit to see the people enjoyed the videos. So with that, please do like and subscribe. Don't take the rage bait and I'll see you in the next video.